Hello, hello, and welcome once again. J76NY here, and today I'm going to be taking my first look at a game I have been very excited about ever since they announced it, uh, probably middle of last year. The game is called The Great War Western Front. Uh, as you guess, it, it is about the Western Front of World War I, where you can play as either uh, the Central Powers or Germany, or the Entente, uh, France, Britain, America. Um, this is the demo. It is part of the Steam 2023 Next Fest. Uh, the game is going to be released at the end of next month, which is a lot sooner than what I was expecting, so um, I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, the demo does offer quite a bit, so this may turn out to be its own little mini-series here, but this is definitely something that I'm going to be bringing to my channel uh, in a major series campaign playthrough type of form. Uh, so if this is a game you're interested in seeing, uh, you want to follow along, hit the subscribe. Uh, eventually, once the game is released, it will be making a reappearance on my channel. Uh, it is a turn-based strategic game where you have a strategic map um, and you do your research and supply and troop movement on that. And then when you go into combat with the enemy, it is a tactical game. Uh, that is real time, and the thing that really has caught my attention is it is going to have a persistent uh, battle map, meaning if you cause damage to the terrain through uh, artillery barrages and such, uh, you can see your terrain go from uh, green rural farm fields or urban areas to uh, desolate wasteland and rubble, and that will persist throughout the campaign. So if you do a battle on a map and bomb the hell out of the enemy, those craters are going to be there the next time. So that I think it's going to be um, something that adds quite a bit to the game. Uh, there is a campaign uh, demo and the historical uh, battles. I think there's one, Passchendaele. Um, so we're going to go through the campaign first, uh, and then I'm going to get into the historic battles. The game is from Petroglyph Games and Frontier Foundry. So let's check this out and see what it is. Uh, so these are the campaigns that you can choose, Allied Nations, Central Powers. Uh, this is what we're going to be doing today. Uh, campaign start May 1918. Okay. Uh, start the tutorial after remaining neutral for several years. America is prodded into action by sunken ships and a disturbing telegram. Trying to goad Mexico into invading us. Uh, us being the U.S., me being an American. So uh, let's go with number one. Uh, America arrives. Intro movie, strategic map, regions, objectives, and unit movement. So I guess we're going to be going through the... Uh, tutorial and then I think there's a couple turns you get to play on the strategic and uh, tactical maps at the end of the tutorial and then I'm gonna be doing the um, the historic battle after that I made five thumbnails for this thing so let's see if we uh, have to make some more all right chapter one the Americans arrive America remained neutral through most of World War one supplying aid but not taking part in combat However, Germany's increased attacks on American ships began to sway many in the government. When the British revealed the Zimmerman telegram to the Americans in which Germany offered to return American territory to Mexico if they would become allies and attack the U.S., it was the last straw. I'd lied about my age and joined up when I was 17. Looking back, I was just a foolish boy looking for glory on the battlefield. The That's enemy. like God. Had sunk General ships Pershing there. And trying to turn Mexico against us, and they had to pay. My platoon arrived in France in April of 1918. General Pershing organized our troops. My unit was assigned to a French contingent for training. And none of us had any experience with the new way of fighting, and the trench lines were a bit of a shock. Okay, bonjour. I am Lieutenant Colonel Andre Laurent. Welcome to France. I understand you are eager to fight, but this is the Western Front. The trenches are no place for the inexperienced. 
Uh, the top advisor box contains general information or story content, while the lower box will contain specific how-to information. The advisor is always on during the tutorial, but you can use the options to uh, turn it off in the normal campaign. Okay. Right. I didn't know it at the time, but Laurent had been in the Battle of the Somme. You could see a kind of distance in his eyes. So he didn't let it show in his voice. Now you can click the left and right arrows to review any previous dialogue. Okay. Uh, this is the theater map which depicts the Western Front, including regions in France, Belgium, Luxembourg, and Germany. Each region shows the current controlling factions. Okay. The map is divided into hexes called regions. All regions in the map begin under the control of either the Allied Nations or the Central Powers. LA Nation regions, hexes are highlighted in blue. Central Powers regions are highlighted in red. Uh, looks like we're getting ready for a poker tournament here instead of a war, but whatever. Um, moving on. I will be blunt. The Russian treaty with Germany has freed up nearly 50 divisions of German infantry to be transferred to the Western Front. Your men are needed to shore up the line and push back against the new threat. Uh, the front line is where combat happens. Regions can only indicate, initiate attacks on adjacent hexes. As you capture or lose regions, the front line will adjust position. So this is the front line here. Um, the way I understand it is, say we were to attack from here to Stene, um, it would not be an immediate victory and push them back. The way it works is these stars, one by one, will disappear, so you would have to do... Uh, more than one battle on this battlefield, which gives the uh, persistent battlefield its charm. Our civilians see this German Spring Offensive as something to worry about. Worrying civilian is one who does not support the war and begins doubting that we can win. We've been talking about surrender. Uh, national will. Excuse me, this is the national will up here. Uh, currently, we are at 125 and 125. Um, national will is... One way to win the game, the first faction to push the enemy to zero will be the victor. So, if we get them down to zero, we will win. If they get us down to zero, we will lose. While this army can't worry about the feelings of civilians, the threat of new German manpower is not something to dismiss. If we are not vigilant, Germany could reach Paris, which would suck for them. The second way to win the game is to capture the region containing the faction's command headquarters. For allies, the command headquarters is Paris. For the central powers, the command headquarters is uh, Krosnak, over here. But Paris is still a long way from the front lines, and we will never let Germany get close. Sorry, I'm not doing a French accent, but it won't happen, so don't ask. Uh, you can move the camera using W, A, S, and D. Uh, the arrow keys or holding the middle mouse button. And zoom using the mouse wheel. Nifty. Okay. Next. Turn, maybe? Maybe not. What's happening? We do. Maybe I shouldn't have clicked on Paris. Oh, region stars here. Uh, Germany can try and reach Paris, but we will never let them through. Uh, we will make sure that your American forces are trained to aid us in this defense. Uh, this is what I was talking about, uh, region stars. Uh, when you attack a region, achieving a great victory removes one star. Once the final star is removed, the region becomes yours. One star regenerates per turn for the owning faction as long as no combat occurs in the region. Uh, Paris is also our central hub for new recruits and the manufacturing of munitions, including tanks and aircraft. Uh, some regions have inherent bonuses or features. Paris, for example, has the Command HQ bonus, which designates it as a win condition, and the Deployment bonus. This right here, Allied Nations Command HQ, Deployment France. Okay. And research points. 
next menu. All right. Our forces begin in Paris to be deployed to the front line. Once we get you organized, your men will be deployed in the same fashion. The military units can be moved on the map. Units can have different names, but act the same way. An infantry corps and a tank battalion are both units. Each unit contains a selection of smaller groups called a company. The type of companies found in a unit are not always the same. For example, an infantry corps can contain multiple infantry types and artillery. Uh, French Air Wing. French Tank Battalion. I'm assuming that's found down here. Is that this guy? I guess that's the entirety of the hex. Right. <clears throat> well, seems that this will be a trial by fire. I'd hope to have more time for drills, but orders are orders. Prepare yourself. Uh, events. Objective events are optional requests that grant a reward if completed within the time limit. Turns. Objective events are just one type of event that can occur during the campaign. Uh, Intel is expecting a German assault. French command requests that you, the newly formed Americans, be moved up to reinforce the French forces uh, located at Chateau Thierry. So the objectives are move three American infantry corps to Chateau Thierry and two French tank battalions. One turn. Uh, if we accomplish this, we get 750 gold plus 30 to the national morale. Okay. You've seen the orders. With the influx of new German forces, there are too many gaps in our line. Your job is to fill them. Uh, in the campaign, there is no penalty for failing to complete an objective event other than not receiving the reward. In general, the rewards will be worth the effort, uh, but it's up to me. Okay, so we'll view objectives. Okay. Our forces have been fighting bravely, but they have had little rest or peace for a long time. I'm sure your reinforcements are a welcome sight to them all. Uh, you must achieve a victory of great victory level in combat to remove stars from a region. Okay. We have designated the La Moreau region as a staging ground for the American forces. Any new American units will begin there. Uh, remember that each nation has its own deployment region for bringing in new troops and supplies, as shown in the bonus section of the region selected pane. Somewhere. Uh, the deployment regions are Rusnak for Germany, Paris for France, Calais for Britain, and Le Moreau for the... Our logistics people keep the unit types together for ease of reference. However, th thoughtful distribution of forces is necessary for victory. Our units are displayed on the map as stacks of four types. Infantry, tank, artillery, and siege. Artillery. <clears throat> All present units are shown in the region pane. Uh, left click on a unit will add it to the units to move box. While right clicking moves the entire stack. Clicking directly on a unit stack. On the world map, we'll also select and add the whole stack. Okay. We have to... We have new orders! Send three... Three infantry? Two, three. Our orders are clear. Move those infantry corps to Chateau Thierry to reinforce the French troops already stationed there. Uh, Right-clicking on the target region will automatically move the selected units to the destination. Move out. Click. And there he goes. Okay. Uh, well done. The infantry is filled in the defensive gaps as planned. We should take stock and see what else is needed at Chateau Thierry. I think it was uh, two armor and one tank, or one uh, plane. Uh, units of the same type stack on the map if they are different nationalities. Okay. What do we have to do here? Despite the language barrier, our soldiers seem to uh, get along. Your soldiers will be tired from the transfer, so they will be on defensive duty only for now. Uh, units can either move or attack once per turn. Units can defend 
whether they moved or attacked, but if you initiate an attack, only those units that haven't moved can participate. You cannot attack from a single region more than once per turn. Okay. So I'm supposed to move, I believe, this one armor unit or two armor units and one air unit up there as well. Uh, I had a little French from high school, but learning the language in a classroom was the whole different than being surrounded by it. <clears throat> okay. The common soldiers seemed to get on great, but the officers seemed frustrated. They would exchange information and coordinate attacks, but they would, wouldn't would take orders from each other. Allied forces have to deal with the concept of disunity of command. Certain nationalities gain reduced morale when stacked together. There are three groups, Britain, Canada, Australia... In India form one, group one, France is group two, and America is group three. If it, units from more than one group are in the same region, all, all units suffer a minor morale panel. Belgium can stack groups one and two. The Central Powers does not suffer. All right. If you are ever unsure of your orders, remember to check your logbook. This. All right, so two French tank battalions. What we need. Go to... Okay, I guess that's them. And away we go. Excellent work. The additional forces should be more than enough to defend the area. So we uh, got 750 gold, 30 national will. Chapter 2, Preparation for Battle. Command has granted us gold reserves or completing your orders. This is a vital resource used by officers to requisition all manner of necessary items needed for the global theater. Uh, gold reserves are used for all purchases on the theater demand level. It allows you to purchase new level units such as tanks and aircraft regions, structures, and use strategic abilities. Uh, where would that be? Oh, right down here, gold reserves. Uh, one of the most important uses is to purchase supplies for battle, and from what I understand, supplies are uh, absolutely vital to success in the uh, game. Uh, you are granted additional gold reserves at the start of each turn. And there it was, our first assault orders. We would be going over the top to assault the enemy line. We all felt excitement, fear, nervous energy, and confusion swirling in our guts. In one month, we would face the fact that some of us weren't coming home. Uh, most objective events do not need to be completed on the turn they are assigned. I usually have three to five turns to complete them. It is always a good idea to assess the situation and determine your best time to attack. Uh, French command believes a victory at Chatillon sur marne will pull German forces to that location and relieve some of the pressure on Chateau 3. A good outcome here could also give the people back home positive news. Uh, so, objectives. Reinforce French troops at Montmuriel and capture Chateau... or Chateau sur marne I'm going to absolutely destroy these French names. Alright, view objectives. Uh, region core makeup unknown. Uh, region total core 7. No battle takes place without proper recon work. While we perform aerial reconnaissance over enemy territory, the information can grow stale. Uh, selecting a region display displays a lot of information for enemy regions. However, much of the information is hidden to you. Uh, you will not be able to see the enemy's exact army composition or economic details at least initially. Select Montmorel. Some of our best intel comes from spies in the area. Our operatives can scout out the information we need and relay it to command. Right now we need more information about their military strength. Uh, espionage missions allow you to send spies to connected enemy regions or protect your own directly. Region intel reveals enemy economic and structure information. Army intel reveals enemy units. 
Uh, both missions are initiated from your own region and affect all adjacent enemy regions. Click Army Intel Ability button. And oh. I met one of those spies once, Nerves of Steel. You'd have to be tough to hide behind enemy lines, risking your life with every step you take. Your first espionage mission used each turn will always succeed, but each subsequent one has an increased risk factor. Chance to fail. You get a mission failure, your gold is still spent, you get no additional information, and your ability to perform espionage is locked for the remainder of the turn. Uh, click the check button to... Army Intel return success. Army Intel underway. Our spies are reporting new intel available. Regions and army intel missions affect all enemy regions adjacent to where you activate the mission. Even if the enemy has counterintelligence active in one region, the other may still be affected. You can see the results of these missions by selecting the enemy region. Okay. So it looks like in our objective we have uh, four infantry core. Make that six. And an armored battalion. Our spies are reporting a large buildup of German troops, more than we thought. More than we originally knew about. Active Army Intel will allow you to see the exact unit counts and types, while Active Region Intel allows you to see the enemy structures and economic information. Numbers below the icons show how many units, how many turns the abilities remain active for that region. Some abilities like theft and sabotage are activated directly on the enemy region. Yeah, I'm smiling while I'm talking because this is a lot more than... Uh, a lot more depth than what I was expecting here. This is great. This new information changes the plan somewhat. We will need to bolster our forces with the remaining American troops in uh, Le Moreau if we want to succeed. Remember that you can select the entire stack directly on the map or select it from the region uh, unit tray. Okay, so we have to go back and get the Americans. And select the entire stack and send them here. Here we go. <coughs> we will need every advantage on the battlefield to push Germany back. Command has granted us gold reserves to requisition new tanks. Uh, you can't purchase more infantry corps. They are granted via campaign progress or events. However, you can use gold reserves to purchase tanks, aircraft, and siege artillery from the purchase menu. Which is here. It will take time for the ships to arrive from America with your heavy ordnance. In the meantime, you can use French tanks to supplement your army. Each unit you purchase will contain multiple companies or wings. Remember that unlike infantry, units purchased from the menu can be completely destroyed in combat. If that happens, you will have to purchase replacements. Hey, okay. buy a French tank. Those machines were amazing. Our boys were already coming up with new ways to use them that will hopefully surprise the Germans. I think they also want to take them apart and see what makes them tick. Right. The requisition has come through and our new tanks have been delivered. Uh, newly purchased units will appear in one of three locations when purchased. Calais, Paris, or La Moreau. It's like the new... Restez en position. Yep. Those tanks do us no good sitting in Paris. Transfer them to the battlefield. Oh, there we go. Alright, so you can buy units. I guess you can't buy units unless they let you buy units. Uh, and then send them where you need them along the front. Uh, it would be beneficial to have air support for this battle. Uh, while recon is essential, keeping enemy bombers and balloon busters away from our lines will allow us to concentrate on the trenches. We will need to transfer them to the battlefield, like the aircraft stack in Paris. As with our tanks, we will need to move them to the front line. There we go. 
believe we have sufficient equipment equipped our front line trenches. Now we turn to outlying support for Montmorel. Okay, our unit moved with the rest to Montmorel. As we neared the trench line, we could see the siege artillery setting up well away from where we would be fighting. Those guns were designed to pound trenches. I would hate to be under one of those shells when they landed. Uh, siege artillery are unique units in that they do not appear on the battlefield. Instead, they allow you to use siege bombardment in battles. They do not affect this unity of command. Any siege artillery still in the region when it is captured will be lost. Okay. Just as we depend on spies to gain information, so does the enemy. To that end, we should set up counterintelligence to prevent them from learning about our offensive. Uh, counterintelligence is an espionage ability you can apply to your own regions. It lasts for five turns and prevents all enemy espionage in the region. Each time it prevents an attack, its duration is reduced. So this is the this is the uh, army intel. This is the counter intel. Spies work quickly. By the end of the week, no less than three German agents were captured and interrogated. Unlike other espionage missions, counterintelligence does not suffer from risk. It always works, but loses duration when it succeeds. Okay. Uh, counterintelligence success. You have been using gold reserves to bolster our troops and add firepower to the lines. On the battlefield, however, supply is needed, not gold. A soldier without ammunition or bandages is a soldier who cannot fight. An artillery cannon without, with no shells is nothing but a rock to hide behind. Uh, supply is the currency used during battles. Supply is used to build trenches and other defenses, to call in reinforcements, and to activate abilities such as artillery fire and air missions. Uh, he made sense. Our packs contained our essentials. Rounds of ammunition, some first aid supplies, and hygiene necessities. But there is no way we could carry enough ammunition for an extended battle. Supply trucks could bring in what we needed, but if we had more permanent storage solutions, we could fight without worry. Uh, each unit on the strategic map, with the exception of siege artillery, grants a set amount of supply to the region. This is refreshed for each battle. Uh, supply depots allow us to store what we need for combat in safe locations and keep it in reserve for the region. Without them, you can only use what supply your troops carry with them. Uh, supply depots allow you to pull from the global supply bank to supplement the supply from your units. They are essential if you want to bring the full might of your army to bear against the enemy. And this is the supply button down here. I don't know why, but seeing that depot secured behind the, the ridge gave me a feeling of security. We know at least that we aren't going to lose this battle because we ran out of bullets. It was one less thing to worry about. Uh, there are six different structures available in the campaign, each with its own bonus. All of them have multiple levels that increase in power as you upgrade. That's down here. Now we're on to chapter four, defensive battles. I think I'm actually going to uh, save chapter four for the next episode, uh, continue on through the tutorial. Um, this is definitely a lot more involved than uh, what I was expecting and I'm liking it so far. Um, we will pick up chapter four in the next episode. Uh, if you want to follow along uh, through this and then when it comes to the channel, hit the subscribe, like I said at the beginning. Uh, let me know your thoughts so far on the game. I know this is just the tutorial and we will get into combat eventually. Uh, but for right now, I'm curious what you guys think. So leave your thoughts in the comments below. Um, and we will see you for uh, chapter four. J76NY saying thank you very much for watching and have yourself a very good day.